statement, the Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, sir, with permission, I shall make a statement on the European Council held in Rome on the 27th and 28th of October, which I attended with my right honourable friend, the Foreign and Commonwealth Secretary. The conclusions of the Council have been placed in the Library of the House. The Council had to deal in the first place with some urgent items of current business, namely the community's failure to agree a negotiating position on agriculture for the Uruguay round of trade negotiations. The situation in the Gulf and the position of the foreign nationals held hostage in Iraq and Kuwait and the problems which have arisen in Hungary. Looking further ahead, the Council also dealt with the preparations for the two intergovernmental conferences on economic and monetary union and also on institutional reform, which are due to begin in December. I shall report on the Council's business in that order. The Uruguay round of trade negotiations is due to be completed before the end of this year. The outcome will decide whether world trade becomes steadily more open or we repeat the mistakes of the past and relapse into protectionism. The most difficult item is agriculture. All the major participants in the Uruguay round committed themselves to table negotiating offers by the 15th of October. All except the European community have done so. The community has been discussing this problem since the round began in the autumn of 1986. It gave an unequivocal commitment in April last year to make substantial and progressive reductions in agricultural support. That commitment was repeated at the Houston Economic Summit in July this year. The Commission has put forward a proposal for 30% reductions backdated to 1986. <laughs> so what has already been done by way of reduction of support since then will be set against that 30%. There have been six sessions of European Community Ministers to discuss the proposal. The most recent, lasting some 16 hours, was on Friday last week, but no agreement has been reached. The main opposition has come from France and Germany. The community's failure has harmed its reputation. Negotiations between the leading groups of countries cannot start until the community's proposals have been tabled. The European Council requested ministers to meet again and put the Commission in a position to table a negotiating offer. The Netherlands Prime Minister suggested that the basis for this should be the position reached when agricultural ministers suspended their work early on 27th of October. But President Mitterrand made clear that France would continue to vote against those proposals. It remains for agriculture and trade ministers to try yet again to reach a conclusion. If we fail, it will give a signal to the world that the community is protectionist. Yeah. Yeah. Next, the Gulf and the position of the hostages. The European Council agreed a firm statement calling for Iraq's withdrawal from Kuwait and confirming Europe's absolute commitment to full implementation of the United Nations Security Council resolutions. It makes clear that we shall consider further steps if Iraq does not comply. The message is that Saddam Hussein must not gain anything from his aggression. Yeah. The Council also strongly condemned Iraq for holding foreign nationals as hostages and for using them in an unscrupulous way. This is totally unacceptable. Moreover, Iraq is negotiating over the hostages with the purpose of trying to divide the international community. After considerable discussion, the Council affirmed our determination not to send representatives of our governments in any capacity to negotiate with Iraq for the release of hostages and to discourage others from doing so. I believe that the unity of the Twelve and our determination not to allow Saddam Hussein to divide us on the question of hostages will send a very powerful signal to Iraq. The third point, assistance to Hungary. In the course of the Council, member states received appeals from the government of Hungary for help in dealing with the serious problems which have arisen as a result of the reduction in the supply of oil from the Soviet Union. The consequent price rises have given rise to unrest. 
The Council issued a strong statement of support for Hungary in pursuing its path towards democratic and economic reforms and the rule of law. The Council also agreed at the United Kingdom's suggestion to bring forward and disperse rapidly the second instalment of the $1 billion community loan for Hungary, which we agreed last year. This will be of direct practical assistance. Those, Mr. Speaker, were the urgent matters on which the Council had to act. Looking further to the future, we also discussed the preparations for the two intergovernmental conferences, the IGCs, which will start their work on the 14th of December. For the Conference on Political <coughs> Union, the Council had before it a report by foreign ministers listing a wide range of possible institutional changes which the Intergovernmental Conference might consider. Heads of government called for further work to be done on these proposals between now and December. My Right Honourable Friend, the Foreign Secretary, and I argued that it would be wrong to prejudge the conclusions of the Intergovernmental Conference. We were on strong ground <laughs> since the community's original decision to call the conference specified that it should set its own agenda. Nevertheless, others wish to give specific directions to the IGC. We therefore reserve the United Kingdom's position on, for example, extension of the community's powers into new areas, greater powers for the European Parliament in the legislative sphere, defining European citizenship, and a common foreign and security policy. All these are issues for discussion at the Intergovernmental Conference itself, rather than to be settled in advance. On economic and monetary union, I stress that we would be ready to move beyond the present position to the creation of a European monetary fund and a common community currency, which we have called a hard ECU. But we would not be prepared to agree to set a date for starting the next stage of economic and monetary union before there is any agreement on what that stage should comprise. And I again emphasize that we would not be prepared to have a single currency imposed upon us, nor to surrender the use of the pound sterling as our currency. The hard ecu would be a parallel currency, not a single currency. If, as time went by, people and governments chose to use it widely, it could evolve towards a single currency, but our national, but our national currency would remain unless a decision to abolish it were freely taken, were freely taken by future generations of Parliament and people. Yeah.